climate policy is no longer an environmental policy. Climate policy has become economic policy. Straight, forward, economic policy. Unless we incorporate what we already know we can do in terms of migrating to a low carbon economy into our economic planning, we are not really moving forward in those terms as we want to. The fate of the most vulnerable will be the fate of the world. It's only a matter of time before every country ends up having to step in our shoes. Let me give you an image of the present situation in my country. First, there is the danger of habitat loss. Land loss and beach erosion are accounted as major impacts the country faces. Over 80% of the land area in the Maldives is less than one meter above the mean sea level. As of today, about 50% of all islands in the Maldives are experiencing severe coastal erosion. We have about 1,100 islands. Despite compelling science-based evidences and growing calls, we observe an inertia on the part of those responsible for the danger posed by climate change. It is out of such compulsion that the countries that stand to suffer most from climate change form the Climate Vulnerable Forum before Copenhagen, Copenhagen COP15 in 2009. The situation would become disastrous with even a meter rise of sea level due to global warming as it would inundate a fifth of Bangladesh, displacing nearly 30 million people and leading to mass movement of people. The scenario would be just as horrifying for a small island developing states like Maldives, Kiribati, and Tuvalu, and also for Himalayan countries. We cannot afford to lose heart. In 2009, we established a Climate Vulnerable Forum to give voice to the most climatically vulnerable countries. I am confident that the current edition of the monitor would enhance our understanding of climate change challenges, impacts, and actions needed. The best way to move forward is making the issue of climate change an economic opportunity. So while there is a lot to be said about the challenge that it poses, there is an equal amount to be said about the opportunity, the economic opportunity here. If we look at the compendium of carbon emissions which we have today in the world, full 50% of them can already begin to be reduced with no further need for intergovernmental agreements. The other 50% need the intergovernmental agreements, and we hope that countries move fast forward with respect to those agreements. But with respect to carbon emissions that can be reduced today, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit 